tonight. I want to thank uh, this organization for coming here. Uh, we at Holy Trinity uh, look forward to any kind of ecumenical Orthodox activities. And over the years, uh, we're relatively new. This, is, this facility is about 15 or 16 years old. But we've had two of the most successful IOCC dinner banquets fundraisers here in this hall. Uh, one evening we had over 300 people. Uh, Father Tom Paris uh, co-chaired that event with uh, our local committee here, uh, Steve Creter from the Antiochian Diocese, which is a sister parish not too far away. But we've also had many uh, fundraisers here for the Patriarch Athena Chorus Orthodox Institute at Cal Berkeley. And I will say to you, that organization deserves the support of everybody in this room who's local. Because what that has done over the last 20 years is bring together all of the students, regardless of ethnicity, Chinese, Albanian, Greek, Serbian, you name it, Orthodox kids, or scholars at Cal, and it brings them together every Tuesday for liturgy, for dinner, for socialization, and for common dialogue. So I would say to you, those of us that are many in this room who are part of that, uh, we have a, a number of uh, students uh, who have come back after graduating and come back and help uh, support the program uh, financially and by just their presence supporting the efforts. Uh, the other thing I will say to you is we try and have been, I think, somewhat successful in getting other Orthodox people to come for various occasions like this. And it's, uh, it's something that we pride ourselves in. We're a very small parish. Uh, this little community was started with 50 families. And we have some of the issues that have been raised here today because now we have a lot of the newcomers who are refugees from the breakup of Yugoslavia. So they're here from refugee camps in Kosovo, Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia. And this uh, little parish uh, meets their needs because they did not really come here voluntarily. They came here as refugees. Unlike my parents who came here 100 years ago, who came here by choice, whether that were to work in the mines or on the docks or to open up uh, mom and pop uh, businesses, these refugees lost everything. A farm, a business, uh, land, uh, opportunities because of the breakup of Yugoslavia. Not unlike what's going to be happening with people from Syria, from Lebanon, from Egypt. We are going to get a tremendous influx of people uh, from Palestine, from, from these countries in the Middle East. So the ethnic part of this is going to be important to those people because that's where they can touch something that they left that is different from, if you will, a, uh, a parish that is primarily or if not exclusively English speaking. Having said that, I agree with everyone that says English is where it's at. And we, if we're going to grow as an Orthodox Church, uh, our experience has been you have to use the English language to survive in this uh, society. You have to learn English anyway. And I think, for example, the Spanish do a disservice to their own by having these dual parallel tracks. It just keeps the people behind. And we have to do what we can as a church to bring our, in our case, Bosnian Serbs or Kosovo Serbs into this street and help them learn English. What's amazing is how good our kids do in academics. At the high school level and at the university level, uh, these refugee kids are excelling all over the place. So they're now studying medicine at UC Davis or at UCLA or at Duke University from our little community here, our refugees. So we have a, a lot of uh, to offer. As we know, 70% of our kids marry outside of uh, the Orthodox faith, by that I mean marrying non-Orthodox. So that's a challenge in this country. Uh, the fact that uh, we're all broken up, as somebody said, uh, the two Lutherans that wanted to become Orthodox didn't know which one to be. 
uh, Greek or Russian or Serbian. Uh, we, have, we can overcome those things. So the two things that my experience has been in the last 20 years, IOCC, number one, and the Orthodox Institute at Cal, number two. We have become close, close friends with people through IOCC because of the commonality that we found with each other and the goals that have been achieved by working together. Uh, we didn't know a lot of the uh, people who were of Lebanese or Syrian extraction or Greek extraction, but through IOCC, we got to know them and they've been able to achieve a great deal. Uh, so I would say we've got experience of working together as an Orthodox family, we have real good models and it's not just the Bay Area, it's happening in Chicago, it's happening in Cleveland, Detroit, and everywhere else. So I think the bishops, uh, some are ready and some are not. We are especially blessed, uh, the Serbian Church. In the West, we have Bishop Maxim. Uh, he uh, called me personally and said, Would you apologize for my not being able to be there? And so I'm doing that on his behalf. Uh, he is 100% behind all of the activities that are happening here. Now, is he uh, a typical Serbian bishop? No. <laughs> uh, because we have a couple of other bishops who will be uh, you know, dragged uh, slowly through, uh, uh, through the uh, soil to, to get to the stage. But I think in time, uh, as somebody said, I think earlier in the presentation, the fact that it's happening has frightened some of these bishops. So they want to get on board or at least try to influence the, uh, the dialogue and, and the potential outcome. Uh, one last thing and then I'll stop. But again, thank you for coming here. Thank, thank you, you for, for uh, picking this spot to, to hold this conference. Uh, I will say that this, uh, uh, this group is, is more significant than a lot of our old, us old timers appreciate. I remember way back People know the name Father Cuneris from Minneapolis. Uh, in 1960, he was talking about this. He's written many, many texts uh, on this subject. I have to have had him as a counselor uh, at the University of Minnesota. And we used to talk about these things. That was his dream that in his lifetime that something like this uh, could be achieved. Well, it's probably not going to be achieved or anything like that, but the process is real. And I think he is overjoyed at the fact that this process is ongoing. Mm -hmm. So with that, again, I thank you. I would ask, if you haven't seen our little church, uh, please go take a look. Uh, this was used to be a little Baptist church that we converted into an Orthodox church over time. And uh, we brought out a, an absolutely fantastic woman, iconographer, who came in and did the frescoes. This was a woman about 40 years of age who studied in Athens came in here and spent three months on site doing all this by hand. So I want all the women here to know that there are tremendous women I think I'm person. <laughs> also, thank you again for being here.
who in harmony decreed that there should be one hierarch in each city, serving and faithful as a loving father over his children, one shepherd over united flock. We also praise your holy name, O Father, without beginning, the Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit, the life creator, illumine the way and guide us all once again. So, so uh, a reading from Revelations. Then the angel showed me the river of life, rising from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and flowing crystal clear down the middle of the city street. On either side of the river were the trees of life, which bear twelve crops of fruit each in a year, one in each month, and the leaves of which are the cure for the pagans. The band will be lifted, the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in its place in the city. His servants will worship him, they will see him face to face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. It will never be night again, and they will not need lamplight or sunlight, because the Lord God will be shining on them, and they will reign forever. The angel said to me, All that you have written is sure and will come true. The Lord God, who gives the spirit of the prophets, has sent his angel to reveal to his servants what is soon to take place. Very soon now I shall be with you again. Happy are those who treasure the prophetic message of this book.